Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship for the Brandon Mill Church. It is an honor to be with you this morning. Once again on YouTube, this is the 20th Sunday on YouTube since we were together in our sanctuary. I'm in the conference room today, and the reason I'm in here is because they are finishing up today in the sanctuary and fellowship hall the new live streaming equipment. And so we're very excited, but I'm coming back in this room where we recorded uh, many um, weeks ago, but it's a very special place. I learned after the first time that um, this tapestry behind me was made by Helen Sanders, and it is beautiful, and it's a lovely room here at the Brandon Mill Church. I just want to remind you that we are pre-recording each of our elements, but um, I am so excited that we are getting closer to the day when we will be able to be filming in the sanctuary. I want to thank Dr. Bill Harp for giving the sermon last Sunday while I was away, and also to thank Mike Bachman and Andy Pittard for ensuring that the video taping went seamlessly. So I'm very grateful. I hope you read your e-news uh, this past week to see all the things that are taking place while the building is closed. It is amazing as we once again aim for September 13th to return to in-person worship. The council will be meeting tomorrow night, and so I ask you to pray and watch for an update after that meeting. A reminder that we continue to have two Bible studies during the week. One is the men's Bible study at 8.30 on Wednesday morning in the multi-purpose room. They would love to have you. And um, also on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, Barbara Flint leads a Bible study on Zoom. So if you're interested in either one of those, please be in touch with Dawn Renka, and she will connect you to the appropriate one. As Barbara mentioned last Sunday, we have uh, a very amazing mission event about to occur on Saturday, September 29th. We are calling this a Trunks Giving. And between 9 and 11 on that Saturday morning, you may drive up uh, to the church and you can open your trunk and uh, there will be six members of the mission team here ready to take your goods uh, and so that we can uh, deliver them either uh, school supplies to Mercy Mall or food for feed to 3112. So please remember to bring food or school supplies. Barbara Flint will have her van, I'll have my pickup, and I hope we need a lot more. So please, this is our moment to truly reach out and be the mission-focused church that the Brenda Mill Church tries to be. And so this morning, I want to continue to thank you for the way that you are supporting the Brandon Mill Church by giving through the mail, by giving in our secure drop slot, or giving online. You are doing a fabulous job supporting the ministries that are occurring even while this building is closed. So I say thank you uh, this morning. I also thank you for the way you continue to respond with virtual blue cards. And I have one name for us this morning, as we learned that Ann Cordero's husband, Fernando, died last weekend. Ann and Fernando were married here in our sanctuary. Her parents, the Bonavis, are in our memorial garden. So please remember today, Ann, in this time of loss, with words of encouragement, Simply email those to Don Ranka, and we will compile those and distribute them. Remember that tomorrow morning, Don will send out an email requesting any other uh, names that have come in since today. 
Please join me in the call to worship. Let us worship God, who is our light, our strength, and our salvation. When our confidence is in God, we shall not fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing we ask of God, one thing we seek, to live in the house of God all the days of our lives, that we may behold the beauty of God in creation and in one another. The Lord is my light and my, my salvation. Of whom should I, uh, shall I be afraid? One thing we ask of God, one thing we seek, to live in the house of God all the days of our lives, that we may know God's goodness and strength all the days of our lives. Please join with me as we confess our sin before God and one another. Lord God, early in the morning, when the world was young, you made life and beauty and mystery. You gave birth to all that we know. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a cradle announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious statesmen, and silent friends, you accepted the penalty for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied, and destroyed you. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, in the multicolored company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your interest in us. So to you, we pray. Lord, bring new life where we are worn and tired. Forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded. And the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit, where we are the prisoners of ourselves. Great news has come to us, dear friends. God, who is faithful and just, who cherishes, cherishes us as we are, seeks healing for those broken places in our lives, forgives and loves us unconditionally. Receive that good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I am so happy to bring you this children's time today. Barbara Flint has been doing a wonderful job, but I wanted to share something with you today in a very special way. Today, the scripture talks about the reason that we all are part of the Brandon Mill Church. And there's one reason, and that reason is Jesus Christ. And Paul, in our scripture today, it makes that wonderful statement that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I want to show you something. T too many times we focus on a lot of other things, even here at the church. 
But even as you think about going back to school, it's easy to focus on a lot of things. But there is one thing that I want to tell you is so important. We talk all the time about the good news that Jesus Christ is always with us wherever we go. Whether we're doing school at home or in person, that Jesus is always with us. So I want to show you something that reminds me to keep my eye on Jesus and not on other things. And this is a peacock feather. And the amazing thing about this feather is that I can hold it in my hand and it will stay up as long as I'm looking at it. But if I take my eyes off, it falls down. Watch this. I'll do it again. I keep my eye on it and it stays up. I look other way and it falls down. That's such an amazing reminder for us that we keep our eyes on Jesus because Jesus is always with us. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to be afraid because Jesus is always with us. So keep your eye on Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to us to show us how to live, to show us how to love, and to remind us that we are never alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turning with thee
Let us pray. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generations, may we hear your eternal word that does not change. Then, may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Our scripture lesson for today is from the second book of Corinthians, chapter four, verses one through six. Listen for the word of God. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose hope. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God, thanks be to God. In my sermon today, I want to share some of my thoughts from a few days of stopping my routine, trying to reboot my life as your pastor in these incredible times like we've never experienced in our church, in our community, in our nation, and in our world. I had not taken any time since Christmas and I never realized how badly I needed to stop to have some time for contemplation. So I want to uh, share some of my thoughts with you this morning. I began my week by taking a quick trip to Salisbury to see Ben. I posted this picture on Facebook saying that when Diddy needs some fresh air, Nothing beats some time with Ben. It was a reboot for me. And then here are some thoughts from my contemplation. I met with the new district superintendent of the Richmond District in the United Methodist Church, Dr. Hyo Lee. I also spent a lot of time keeping up with the news on COVID-19 the impact that this global pandemic was having in our state's educational system, how that was rippling through so many levels in so many ways from preschools to colleges and universities. Even the Brander Mill Church Board has recently had to make the very difficult decision to not begin until January 2021. I stayed informed on all that was continuing to occur around our nation over racial injustice. Whether it was the Confederate statues, whether it was a conversation with the Chesterfield County Police Department, seeing if they would be willing to come and speak to our T4C group to hear all sides of this conversation. Oh, and one more event, a national election in less than two months. 
So much to contemplate as a minister of the word and sacrament. And back to Ben, when did he need some fresh air? Nothing beats some time with Ben. But I want to ask this morning, is there something more for all of us? In my contemplation, I was thinking about what it means to be a body of Christ during these times. I am confident that in this time when there's so much pain, when there's so much division, the church plays such a critical role. How can we stay together even when we cannot physically be together? And so today's reading from 2 Corinthians 4 seem the perfect words for our moment as a body of Christ. And Paul begins our passage today by saying, we do not lose heart. What does that mean? It means that because of God's grace in Jesus and the hope founded upon it, Paul reaffirms that he and he wants all of us to not lose heart. The Greek word can be translated despair or become weary. And oh, how we need this confidence. I want to speak about three things from our passage that Barbara read this morning. First, Paul says, because we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We are engaged in this ministry. We are representatives of the good news that God has come to this world in Jesus Christ. God has come to save us, to save us from sin, to save us from fear, to save us from despair, to save us from death itself. You are representatives of this good news. I am a representative of this good news. God has come to us. Sadly, it seems there are times when we don't even realize how badly we need the salvation that God offers us. But maybe in these times, we might be a little more open to hear this. I love the story about a young woman who stops at a truck stop as she's traveling home. It was a nice place to stop. And maybe you've had a daughter who's traveled home to see you for a visit, and you can understand this story. The story says after she filled her car with gas, she walked into the truck stop to get a snack. She came back out to her car, she got into the car and started to drive off to the freeway. When she got on the freeway, she noticed in her rear view mirror that a truck was following her. And so she would speed up and the truck would speed up. She would slow down and the truck would slow down. This happened over and over until she finally pulled off at a rest stop. She jumped out of her car and started running to the building. And as she ran, she turned and looked. As the trucker had gotten out of his truck, went to her back door, pulled her back door open, and then pulled a man from the back seat, a would-be attacker who had crawled into her car while she had gone inside. This trucker was following her to save her life. And the story says this young woman will never forget that moment. And so Paul would say to us, God has come after us in Jesus to save us, to rescue us. And so we are engaged in this ministry. We are representatives of this glorious good news. And it's not that we have found Jesus, but the good news is that Jesus has come after us. Jesus has found us. Jesus has rescued us. Jesus has given us life, and we can be confident of that. The second element in our reading is found when Paul says that 
in this ministry, in this service, we are seeing the light of the gospel, the good news of the glory of Christ, who is in the very image of God. Christ, who has come after us. Christ, who has come to rescue us, to give us life, is the very image of God. Which means the more I learn about Jesus, the more I learn about God. And we are reminded in these words, when we go back to the creation story in Genesis, that tells us that human beings are created in the image of God. It makes me wonder what might happen if we began to see anyone standing in front of us through the lens of Christ's rescuing love, that they too are created in the very image of God, no matter what they've done, no matter who they are. And finally, in our passage, Paul says, we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Since the day that I became your pastor here at the Brandenville Church, in our unity as a union church, a beautiful place to be, I have said that our unity is in that statement that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. When anyone joins this church, they are not asked what they believe about certain issues. They are asked, do they reaffirm that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. I've said this over and over and will continue to say it, that we can agree to disagree on many issues, but this is the statement that unifies us. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Paul is saying that being a follower of Jesus Christ is not about me. It's all about being transformed into being the ambassadors of this good news of God's love in Jesus. Our unity is found in this statement that Jesus Christ is our Lord. There's a book that I've recommended to our T4C group, and it's written by Deidre Riggs. The title is One, Unity in a Divided World. She says that those who follow Jesus are people of the way, Christ ambassadors. We are not citizens of this world. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we represent the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors, she says, of God's restoration in Christ and reconciliation of culture and community, churches and character right here on this spinning sphere of earth, life, death, and hope. Deidre goes on to state that we sometimes mistake our opinions on positions or as being critical to our identity. And when we do, she says, these differences stand between us and Christ. Our identity is that we are people who affirm in our daily lives that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We do not proclaim ourselves. We do not proclaim our opinions, our stands on certain issues, even our political party. We proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. This means, as Paul states in Colossians 1:27, Christ in us, the hope of glory, in me, in you, in all of us at the Brandenville Church, the hope, the strength, the courage, the unconditional love, the resurrected life of Jesus Christ is in us. So the church is God's gift of unity in the midst of our divisiveness. And our unity is not about any certain opinion. It is all about our affirmation that Jesus Christ is Lord. We will not lose hope. We will not 
become weary. We will not lose heart. So who am I? Who are you? I am a follower of Jesus Christ. That is my identity. I am not defined by my opinions. I am not defined by what I have or do not have. I, have, I am not defined by worry, concern, or despair. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a citizen of God's kingdom. Last week, as I thought about all that is happening all around us, I long to reaffirm my relationship to Jesus Christ. I want to be, as Martin Luther said, a little Christ in the midst of all the unknowns. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want to live daily with such confidence. There's a wonderful little book called Blue Like Jazz, written by Donald Miller. I've used this book with young adults, and it's a wonderful discussion guide. And in this book, in one part, Donald Miller talks about what it means to think about our relationship with Jesus. And he tells about a friend of his who traveled around the country asking ministry leaders questions. He went to successful churches and asked the pastors about what they were doing and why what they were doing was working. Miller said it sounded very boring to him, except for one visit his friend made to a man named Bill Bright. Bill Bright was the president of a big ministry. And Miller's friend said he was a big man, full of life, who listened without shifting his eyes. Miller's friend asked a few questions, and Miller said the final question that he asked Dr. Bright was the one that stuck out to him. And this was the question. What does Jesus Christ mean to you? Miller's friend said Dr. Bright couldn't answer the question. He said Dr. Bright just started to cry. He sat there in his big chair behind his big desk and he wept. And when Miller's friend told that story, Miller said he wondered what it was like to love Jesus that way? So as we continue through these challenging days, may we reflect on Christ's rescuing love for us and therefore reflect upon our love for others as ambassadors of this amazing solitary life who has walked the face of this earth May we ask ourselves, what does Jesus mean to us? And as we do, we will live with confidence. We will not lose heart. We will not despair. We will not become weary. And so this morning, we say thanks be to God for this glorious gift. Amen. And so the Apostles' Creed offers us this opportunity to say with confidence what we believe. And so please let us say together these words. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Merciful God, so much is happening around us, and it is so easy for us to lose heart, to become weary. Be with us, loving God. Remind us today that you have come to us in your Son, Jesus. You have rescued us from fear, from despair, from worry, from hopelessness, even from death. We affirm this morning the good news that we reaffirm every time we profess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Fill us with the confidence that we are part of a body of Christ where Christ is our unity. Christ is our hope. Christ is our strength. Christ is our life. Keep the needs of others in our hearts and minds. We pray for those impacted by the fires in California, the storms in Iowa, and the flooding here locally. We pray today for the needs for healing, especially those impacted by COVID-19. Assist our healthcare workers who are continuing to be worn thin by the challenges of this pandemic. And oh God, our nation feels so divided. And we come to you this morning longing for your peace and your unity. We pray that you will constantly remind us that our unity comes in trust in your son Jesus, who has given us life and love so that we can live as ambassadors of that good news to others. And confident in Jesus' love for us, we now pray as he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, we offer our treasure and hearts to God. We believe our gifts will be used to pass on the promise of hope, of peace, of life, of community to all in need. We thank you for your faithful giving through the mail and online as we continue during these challenging times to listen for the Spirit's call. Let us pray. Sustaining God, we give our offering confidently, knowing that you can use these gifts, confident that these gifts can further your kingdom, confident that your kingdom will come. Your kingdom, your will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
We have been reminded today that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We've been reminded today that we are God's ambassadors of this good news of love. We are loved, we are forgiven, we are empowered, and now we are sent to live as God's faithful ones. And so I say, let us not lose heart. And remember, as you go from this time, that you go no place alone. But the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you all now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen.